Hi guys and welcome back. Today's video is watercolor and I tried out a few new things and it was a lot of fun experimenting with this one and the subject matter is definitely one that I'm really interested in so I had a lot of fun with this one uh, but we can get right into it and I can go ahead and talk a bit about what I did differently for this one. So this is a watercolor as I mentioned and usually when I do watercolors I like to do the line work in ink. I really like how solid it is and when I put in the watercolor it has the contrast that I want. But I was basing this painting off of a sketch that I show right here at the beginning and I actually really loved the green look of the sketch where it was this green pencil and it had this really beautiful forest color to it and I loved it and I didn't really want to get rid of that aspect to it when I was looking at the sketch itself I was thinking up a lot of these color palette ideas and values that I wanted to play with and I knew that having this lighter line work like that where it was green there would be a lot more interesting things that I could try out with this one and I was really looking forward to that and to seeing what I could do with it uh, specifically I knew that since I was going in with a lighter line work, I would be able to go in with a much lighter painting while it's still having enough contrast to show. So a lot of times when I do very dark line work, if I don't do enough within the painting itself, it looks a little bit undone. And so I knew that being able to go in with this kind of a method, I'd be able to be a little bit more light handed in some areas, the way that sometimes I would like to be. And yeah, it was one that I knew going into it that I had to make sure that I was showing restraint. This is definitely something that I let get out of control a lot. I'll let things get darker and darker incrementally over time as I'm working on it with watercolor. So this one starting out, I knew I had to be very in control of what values the paints were that I was using so that the line work wouldn't get lost itself. Um, but yeah, but a little bit about the line work itself. I'm using a pencil that is a very thin pencil and I believe that now I think they're actually made by Prismacolor. This one is a much older version. It's actually a really, really old pencil, but it is a lot harder of a lead than your typical Prismacolor colored pencils. And that was definitely preferable for me for doing the line work like this because I was able to get a little bit more of a harder edge when I was doing these lines. I did still, I definitely still had that pencil -y texture to it, which is what I wanted. That's why I chose a pencil for the line work. So I did, when I was doing the line work, I wanted to be careful enough when I was working on it so that I filled in all the little grooves of this very textured watercolor paper without necessarily destroying the grooves and the texture within it. And that one, I kind of tried to layer it over and over again with the pencil to build it up into those cracks and to build up a more bold or solid line work. And it, for the most part, worked. But as I was working on it more and more, the more I got so that I was just pushing harder on it so that it would get a sharper line and a quicker, darker line. And overall, I don't think it really made a difference one way or the other. So I'll kind of remember that in the future. But I liked being able to like carefully build it up. That's a, one of the big, big differences of doing line work with a pencil compared to ink work is that the pencil is a lot more of a buildable medium for me. I can go in with it and make sure that it's positioned the way I want. I can do these light little sketch marks and build it to the point that I want it to. And I like that level of control. So that was definitely something that I was enjoying working with this pencil. And oh, and also this particular type of pencil, it is, since I mentioned it's very hard, it is also not very smeary at all. It had a nice crisp line. And I did make sure that I rested my hand on another paper while I was doing the line work, but even when I was doing that and when I did the painting, it didn't budge at all, which was awesome. That was clearly what I wanted. I have tried doing watercolors before in the past with graphite. And as many of you probably guessed, and as I kind of saw it coming, it did smear a little bit into the line work or into the painting itself. So this kind of pencil definitely worked for keeping it out of the watercolor itself. And it kept it very much where I put it. And I love that it was a color that was so great because I was able to base the entire color palette of this piece around that particular pencil. And that was great because I was able to do these really cool looking techniques, especially in her hair. That's the area that I think I like how it interacts with the line work itself the most, because I think the hair is one of the darker areas of her 
but it has almost the exact same color as the line work. And I just, I really love how the line work almost disappears within it, but it's still there. And there's that really amazing harmony. It was really pleasant to put that first wash down and watch as it blended in with the hair color and the line work. And yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite parts is just putting it down and seeing immediately that it had this really harmonious overall look and that the line work itself wasn't super harsh and standing out and extremely contrasted, which a lot of times is absolutely what I want. But this one, I was enjoying a little bit of a different type. And I actually cut, well, I tore down a very custom size of watercolor paper for this piece. Normally when I'm working in watercolor, they end up being the same dimensions. I have like two or three different sizes that they end up, but they have the same dimensions because I tear them down from the same size original sheet. So they always end up the same. And for this one, I felt like the smaller one just wasn't quite right. And the bigger one was too big. So I wanted to do a custom one for this one. So I tore it in a particularly different way this time. And I definitely enjoyed working in a different uh, size. So that part was really nice, but I think that the big problem was is that when I started off with this one, I had intentions of doing a background design element, which I do end up doing, but as I was working on it, it felt very unbalanced. She did not feel grounded in the composition or the size of this paper. And since I wasn't starting on that background element yet, I wasn't really sure how she was going to place within it anyways. So that was one thing that as I was working on it, I was feeling like it just wasn't quite the right size for her. So I end up going in with an extra border of tape on each side just to narrow the actual canvas that I'm working on so that it fits her a little bit better. And I do like that a lot more. And when I'm actually done with this piece and I peel up the tape, I really love that extra thick border. I've done it a few other times and I, I just really love the look of it. I feel like it looks a lot more stunning in a way. So I think that I do want to do more pieces where I have an extra wide border, this really wide, fat, white border. But yeah, that's uh, one thing that at the beginning, I wish that I had taken a little bit more time to make sure that I had the size of my paper a little bit better fitted to what I was actually going to work on. I kind of rushed into that a little bit too fast. Um, and I think that the design element that I end up getting to in the background behind her, it started off as something that I was actually kind of really liking. I liked the like spotty looking textured line that I was getting at that very, very beginning. But as usual, it's something that I ended up pushing too far and I added too many layers and it kind of got out of hand. So that's one thing that I, I learned from my mistakes. I can see what I did wrong and what point I should have stopped. But yeah, and I think that it's a little bit too dark overall. I wanted this whole piece to feel very light and to look light starting from that base of having a very light line work, but that area I think is just a little bit too dark. Yeah, right about now, this background area, I was really, really liking. I really liked that. I did another layer because I wanted it to have less contrast, but in the end it just made it have more contrast with the rest of the piece. So yeah, that's just uh, <laughs> the way it goes sometimes is retrospectively, I can see what I should have done and what I would have liked to have stopped at. And I can get better at that. Uh, another area that I feel like I definitely overworked is her eyes. You'll see it in a minute where I just go over them over and over again because I can't quite get it right. And each iteration that I do takes it farther away from that initial sketch. I felt like I really loved the look that I had in her eyes for the sketch itself. But in this final one, it kind of got a little bit away from that. It wasn't bad or it wasn't not right anymore. It just wasn't exactly what I had in the sketch. And I was having a hard time letting that go. So I kept pushing it more and more and I put more ink down and it wasn't quite working. So that I tried to wash it off and put another one. And yeah, that was definitely one of those places where I just needed to reel myself back in and not overwork it so much. I do like where it ends up though. So that at least is good. It could have been a lot more of a tragedy since the eyes are kind of that one point where if you really end up screwing it up, the whole piece can really not come together after that point. So all in all, I could have, I could have ruined it a lot worse than it was, but I do actually, I like where her eyes are. They're very different from the sketch and that's okay. I need to get comfortable with things being not exactly the same as necessarily what's in my head or in a sketch, but yeah, I do actually really like what it ends up looking like. It's different and that's good. 
And that is pretty much it for this piece. I loved working on it. I really love the concept and the overall icons and elements that I had going on in this one. I would like to take some of those and try out more refined pieces, ones that I put a little bit more thought into all of the design elements in the piece. So this is a good jumping off point for more pieces that have this similar concept, but is better done. But in the end, I am actually really happy with the final result. I feel like I accomplished something, so that's always nice. But as usual, this original piece is available at my shop. So if you wanted to own this one, you can. There's a link right in the corner of this video where you can check out my shop that'll have this as well as lots of other prints. And I'll also have a link down in the description. And as usual, I'll have a link to all of the tools that I use in the description as well. If you're curious about anything that I'm using, it's down there. But like I said, that is it for today. And I will see you guys at my next video.